Hey train friends, welcome back to The Layout. Happy 2023. Today we are running and reviewing the brand new Lionel Vision Line Class A. This one is very special because it is the very first Lionel Vision Line engine that has been custom painted. This is a one of 50 Pennsylvania Railroad scheme. We're gonna talk about it today on PGH Train Fanatic. Thanks so much for watching and as always, Please like and subscribe, I really appreciate it. Let me know what you think of this amazing locomotive. So let me explain how this engine came to be. This is the very first ever custom painted Vision Line engine. Lionel has been doing custom run engines for several different train shops. Uh, Mr. Muffins has been pretty uh, well known around the train community for O-Gage for putting in custom run requests to Lionel. So when Lionel cataloged the, the new Class A's, I saw an opportunity to contact Mr. Muffin's trains and ask him if he was interested in doing a custom run Pennsylvania version of the Class A, which you see here. At the peak of World War II, the Pennsylvania Railroad was in desperate need of a larger locomotive to handle the ever-growing wartime freight traffic. Unfortunately, they were unable to allocate any money towards research and development of a new locomotive due to the wartime restrictions. So they decided to lease a CNO 2104 and an NW Class A and copy one of those designs. After thorough testing, the Pennsylvania Railroad decided to go with the CNO T1 as a basis for the new locomotive design, which eventually became the PRR J1A. If the Pennsylvania Railroad would have chosen the Class A for their design, they would have made changes such as a high-mounted headlight, a squared cab with larger round windows, a welded coast-to-coast -coast tender, a keystone number plate, and the infamous PR three chime whistle. And last but not least, this locomotive would have been classified by the PR as the FG1, which lives on today in fantasy by the popular video game KL Trains. Here is Class A next to the J1A, and you can see they are actually very similar size locomotives. And now we're going to go over some of the features and details of this amazing locomotive and then run it around the layout. And starting off with the front of the locomotive, you can see details such as the coupler cup bar. On the front pilot, there is a scale coupler that swings open and then closes if you'd like it closed. The low mounted NW style headlight, middle handrails, bicolor classification lights which toggle between green and white, the keystone number plate, and more metal hand railing. Here you can see the Class A builder's plate. And below on the cylinder you can see it has an additional plate with the letter A. You can see all this fine detailing and pipe work it has to do with the articulation since this is an articulated locomotive. And looking toward the rear set of drive wheels, you can see a lot of other detail. It just looks fantastic. And the locomotive does have the blackened drive rods, which were an option that Mr. Muffin asked me about. And here, looking down at the top of the locomotive, you can see a lot of fine detail. Then here's your stack where you load your smoke fluid and metal handrails and perforated walkways. And then here is the pop-off smoke. And it's operated by pressing AUX3 on the legacy remote, or it comes on automatically when the locomotive is in idle, or at slow speeds. Here's the whistle smoke. The whistle detail is not removable on this locomotive, so you'll want to use the pipette or a needle nose applicator to load your smoke fluid. Both domes are held on with magnets and are removable. The front one has the 
Bluetooth switch and the run program switch. And on the rear has all the switches for the sounds and the smoke features. And looking back toward the top of the cab, you can see the bell does swing and there's dynamos and piping and details. The hatches on the top of the cab do slide open and close, which is a really nice feature. And it's a really nice red Tuscan color. Another vision line feature is the speaker in the boiler and speakers in the tender. So sounds will come from areas where it sounds appropriate. Here's a good look at the cab. You can see many details, the numbering underneath the cab window. There are windows that move. I kind of didn't want to break them by showing you that. But inside you can see there's an engineer figure on both sides. And there's your firebox and more detailing below as well. Also take note of the distance between the tender and the cab. You can see it's really nice and there's a drop down plate. You'll see there's two slots where the locomotive attaches to the tender. I disconnected it here so you could get a better look at it. It does have the force coupler which detects the weight of the train behind it. Here's a good look at the inside of the cab. You can see the flickering firebox, the engineer and fireman figures, and the LED lighting. Now we'll take a quick look at the tender. I thought this was neat. It says, be careful, black smoke is waste. You can also see all the riveting detail. It just looks fantastic. Here's a good look at the side of the tender. You can see all the riveting detail and the nice gold Pennsylvania lettering. And looking down at the top of the tender, you can see it's got a nice coal load. It does have the dog house on it, which is really great. I love those. Here's that Tuscan paint again. And this hatch on the back does open like so, but there's no switches back there. The back of this tender does have really great detailing and a phrase on the left there that you don't see too often. And the backup light comes on when you put it in reverse. You've got PRR 3701, and then you also have the electric coupler you can fire open. Overall, I think this locomotive is just absolutely fantastic. The paint colors are great. The MSRP comes in at $2,099. Here's the item number on the box. And if you're interested in buying a Class A or any other train, you can get it from my favorite train store, Brady's Train Outlet in Greensburg, PA.